Scratch has recently upgraded to version 3.0. This has brought in a few interesting changes and a new user interface. In this series, we're going to explore how Scratch 3.0 works and how we can use different coding techniques to create fun games and useful programs. In this video, we'll have a quick look at the Scratch 3.0 user interface and create a simple game to examine some of the basics. To get started, we want to navigate to scratch.mit.edu forward slash create. Uh, as I've got in the top here. Go to that address and it'll load you into the Scratch editor. Scratch 3.0 runs on HTML, so there's no need to allow Flash, uh, and this will lead to some pretty cool stuff that we'll get to later on. If you've used Scratch in the past, you'll notice a different layout. The biggest difference is the left to right workflow. You might also notice that down below we have a tutorial pop up. Um, which is really handy if you want to learn the basics. Um, so feel free to use that if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Uh, for now, I'm just going to close it off. Um, so looking at our user interface, we've got our Scratch Home button. We've got our Language button here. File, Edit, and the tutorials are all there. So you can click on that, um, and it takes you to the tutorials. On the top right, we've got Join Scratch and Sign In. These are the same as before, and your old username and login will still work, as will all of your old Scratch 2.0 uh, pro, uh, programs and games. Looking at the overall layout, we've got our blocks on the left-hand side. These are all now in a continuous line, um, which you can scroll through or swipe through if you're using a touch device. Uh, and you can also use the little menus here to um, head to each group. In the center here, we have our code space, which is um, a bit bigger now than it used to be, and it's in the middle, which I think is, is a great place for it. Uh, and on our right-hand side, we have our stage, and the sprite and stage um, settings are all there as well. For today, we're going to create a small game demo that you can build on for your own games. We're going to start by choosing a background. Um, we'll click on the backdrop for the stage over here, um, and click on backdrop. We can then click down here. You can upload your own pictures, use your camera, um, paint something. Uh, but today I'm going to choose a backdrop. And the one I'm going to choose is the Jurassic backdrop um, because I'm making a dinosaur game. Now you can see here we've got the option to convert to a bitmap. I'm not going to do that today um, because vectors scale better. Um, we'll get into the difference between vectors and bitmap in a different video, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, and we're just going to close off this backdrop one because we don't need it anymore. That's basically it for our backdrop, so we'll head back to our code space, uh, and we're going to click on our sprite. Now I'm going to delete um, the sprite one, I don't want him. I'm going to add my own sprite, and I'm going to search through here for a dinosaur. Oh, if I could spell, dinosaur. So now I've got Dinosaur 4. And what I'm going to do with Dinosaur 4 is make it so I can move him around the page. So I want him to move around, uh, but instead of clicking and dragging him, I want to use the arrow keys. So to start my code off, I'm going to go to Events, and I'm going to drag in a when flag is clicked. This will trigger whenever the flag is clicked, all right? and it will start my code. And the code I want to run is when I press the up key, I want my dinosaur to move upwards. So I'm going to add in an if. So when the flag is clicked, if something happens, and that something is going to be under sensing, it's going to sense is a key pressed, but instead of the space key, we're going to change that to the up arrow. Now we want it to move up. So that's under motion. And moving in the vertical axis, so up and down, uh, uses the Y axis, same as in maths. So Y is up and down, X is left and right. So we're going to change Y by 10. Now this code's almost complete. It's not quite right though, because if I press the flag, it runs the code really quickly. You might not have seen that, so watch clear, Philly. There we go. Um, you'll notice there that the code ran but it only ran very quickly and it stopped. And that's because it checks once when the flag is clicked 
runs the code. Was the arrow pressed? No, it wasn't, so it didn't run. So what we need to do is continually run this bit. Continually have the if getting checked. And we'll do that under controls by adding a forever loop. So now we've got if array up key is pressed, change y by 10. And if I press my flag now, you can see the code becomes highlighted because it's running. And if I press the up key on my keyboard, my dinosaur moves up. So that's great. The next thing we're gonna do is right click on this if and duplicate it. What I wanna do now is bring my dinosaur back down so that I can move him up and down. And I'm going to use the down arrow to move down and I'm going to change Y by, instead of 10, I'm gonna change it by negative 10 uh, because in the Y axis, negative is down. So if I drag this now under there and I run my code, you can see all of it's running. I can move up further and I can move down. So up and down. Now I need to add in some code for left and right. So I'm gonna duplicate both of my if statements by right clicking up the top here and click duplicate. Now over here, I've got my up arrow. I'm gonna change that to my right arrow and down here, I'm gonna change it to left. And I'm gonna get rid of these Y's because um, I don't wanna change by Y. I wanna go back to motion and I want to change X. Um, change X. So if I change X by 10, it'll move right. And if I change it by negative 10, it'll move left. And if I drag that back now into here and run my code, you can see I've got some code that lets me move up and down, left and right. When I press the up arrow, I go up, down arrow is down, left is left and right is right. So everything's working right there. Now to make this actually a bit of a game, I'm gonna add one more sprite. And that last, or the second sprite here, I'm going to add is the beach ball. But instead of a beach ball, I'm gonna rename it, I'm gonna call it egg. And you can choose whatever you really want there, um, but I like the beach ball because it kinda already looks like an egg. And if I go to costumes, uh, because I'm working with a vector image, I can click on the white circle and the black circle. If I hold shift while I've got one highlighted and select the second one, that highlights both of them and then I can stretch it up and maybe I'll stretch it down a little bit too. So it looks a bit more like an egg. Then I'll just move some of these around a little bit. So things are a bit more spread out and looks a bit more egg-like. There we go, now I have a dinosaur egg. Now I'm gonna go back to my code. Now, I want my egg to move randomly around the map. So I want it to be in different spots all over the map and I want my dinosaur to run up to it and collect the egg. So I'm gonna add some code here. When the flag is clicked, again, I'm gonna use a forever loop because I want this to happen forever. Um, what I want my egg to do is go to a certain location. So I'm going to use go to. I'm gonna put that in here. Now I could leave it at negative five, negative 12, which is where it is now, or I could drag it around and you can see over here it changes. But what I really want it to do is do that randomly. So move to random X and Y locations. And I can do that by using the operators. Operators have a pick random. Uh, I'm actually gonna need two of those. So for my X, left and right, the page is 480 pixels wide. So I'm gonna use negative 220 to 220. That gives me 220 from the center and 220 from the center. Uh, which means I won't quite get all the way to the edge, which is good because I don't want my egg to disappear off the side of the page. So I'll pop that in here under X. And then for my Ys, the page is 320 pixels high. So I'm gonna go to 150 and 150. This one needs to be a negative. And I'm going to drag that back up into here. So, now when my flag is clicked, forever it's gonna to go to random locations. If I press 
this. You can see it moves around randomly, which is great. That's doing what I want it to do, but it's not staying long enough. So I need to add a little weight in there. Weights are under the controls here. Um, I'm going to wait five seconds. If I run that code, goes to a random location, waits five seconds, and then moves to another random location. And wait another five seconds, and it should do it again. There we go. All right, so the other thing I need to do here is make it so the egg will kind of hide every now and again. And I'm gonna do that by using looks. Looks impact the way the egg looks. All right? And the look I'm going to use is hide and show. So at the start, when the flag is clicked, I want my egg to hide, go to a random location, show for a few seconds, and then hide once again before it goes back up and starts this loop over and goes to another random location. Now I'm gonna shorten my weight just a little bit to two seconds so that we can test this code. What I could do here is add in another weight. Hides, shows up, hides, shows up, which is more like what I want it to do. So we'll leave it like this. Um, and if your egg hides accidentally like this, you can press this button and it shows your egg. What I need to do now is add in another little bit of code because this isn't really a game yet. There needs to be some interaction between Dinosaur 4 and the egg. So I'm gonna add a new set of code uh, and in this new set, I'm going to add another little bit of information. Uh, and that information is going to be that I want the egg to do something whenever it touches the dinosaur. So I need to actually add an if. So if sensing, touching. So if the egg touches the dinosaur 4, we want something to happen. And what we want to happen is for the egg to hide. But that's not quite all. We need to add one more piece. And that's a variable. Now these are new and we'll do a whole video on how variables work. But we're gonna make a new variable today and we're gonna call that eggs. And the eggs variable, we're going to set to zero at the start of every game whenever the flag is clicked and then change it by one every time the dinosaur touches the egg. So you can see now egg is set to zero, or eggs is set to zero. If I press the flag and I move my dinosaur up and touches it, eggs goes up by one and the egg hides. Just then the egg spawned where the dinosaur is, caught the egg, and again it spawned where the dinosaur is. And you can see we can collect eggs all day. That's great. So now we've kind of got a bit of a game happening. What we need to do now is add in a bit of a win condition. So we need some way to win this game. And for the sake of making it nice and easy, I'm going to have the game end when the score is equal to five or more. So I'm gonna go back to my dinosaur now, and I'm going to add one more if statement. This if statement is going to check if the score is more than five, or more than four, sorry, and then end the game for me. So I'm gonna use a little bit of math here. So if something, which is going to be under variables, eggs, if eggs is, this symbol means greater than, if eggs is greater than four, so if eggs is five or six or seven, uh, because our code only works in whole numbers. If egg is greater than four, then we want something to happen. And under looks, we can go here and say, instead of saying hello, we're going to add in winner. But you can add whatever you want there for two seconds, I'm going to say. And then at the very end, we're going to stop all. So stop all, we'll finish all of the code, all of it will stop running. 
Now we can test that code. Um, we're going to go full screen for this. I'm going to press the flag. My dinosaur moves around. I can catch the egg. Score's going up. Score goes up again. Four. Now if I catch one more egg, we win. Winner. And you can see now I can't move the dinosaur anymore, so the game's over. You can play around with that and change the score. You could also make a way to lose the game. Uh, one of the easiest things to do though here is to change the scale of the dinosaur and the egg so they're not hitting each other by accident quite as often. Um, and you do that by clicking on the dinosaur and here where it says size 100, I might change that to 60 for the dinosaur. So it's a bit smaller and for the egg, I might change it so it's even smaller, 50. And we'll show the egg there. So there we go, we've got a game where our little dinosaur runs around and collects eggs. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications. And if you're a teacher, check out the links in the description for worksheets and lesson plans that go along with this video.